Welcome back, 0K fans, to another exhibition match. And it is going to be a match between Icons and Moodish Code on Iced Coffee. Not quite as... Well, it's not a requested match, it's just one that mentioned in the comments for the replay that this is a match and that in Icons' opinion is worth casting. So we shall have a way to vet Icons' opinion on whether this match is worth casting, but most matches tend to be at least interesting in some way or another. So I'm sure it's got to have something into it. They generally do. I mean, I do cast 0k because I like the game. There's going to be very little that's going to cause me a lot of grief and pain when it comes to casting matches. Anyway, it's going to be an iced coffee, and we'll see how it goes. This map is a map that we've seen a few times before, and it is a map that tended to promote airplay, but I think that the metagame may not. Moodish Code already going for a shieldbot factory, while Icons has not actually built a factory yet. In fact, they don't even have a queue up yet. Surprisingly enough, they are rusty. They listed themselves as rusty, so I would kind of put their elo down probably about 100 down. This is probably a more... If Icons is as rusty as Icons thinks rusty is... Or as they think rusty means, they probably are much more even with Moodish Code than the elo rating would appear to be. We'll see, though. We'll see how it goes. Anyway, Icons is going for Klugabot Factory, going for five glaives. Holy crap! Icons going hyper-aggressive, as is Moodish Code. Both players going very aggressive. I think they might be expecting error. They might just be figuring... Well, the map's small, just go for it. I mean, the map is kind of small. But actually, yeah, it's pretty small. Okay, that does make sense. It is a fairly tiny map. Anyway, five bandits being set up, and nice to set up. Moodish Code has played this map before. They know that units can come up from the backside. This area in the back here is almost completely bot pathable. There are a few sections that aren't, but it is bot pathable. Something to keep in mind, because this map is obviously got a ramp, but less obviously does have this backside you can approach from. And Icons, they've got their five. They're going for the Conjurer and Moodish Code, on the other hand, still going for another three bandits before building up any constructors. Moodish Code is ahead by economy. They are building up a lot of wind generators. They are building up a lot of power. Although, admittedly, at this point, Icons and Moodish Code are basically even. Now that the Conjurer is up as well, does the Conjurer only be used to assist and Icons moving their commander out? So Icons will be expanding as they see. Moodish Code has gone for a very aggressive start. Taking out two of their glaives for free, and the last glaive trying to get away, it should be able to succeed. It is faster than the bandit. It is going to be able to get away. The bandits do not give chase. As well, they shouldn't, because that would be... A, well, actually, in this case, it wouldn't be a bad idea. In general, though, giving chase in 0k is a recipe for failure. Especially giving chase through choke points. That's something that really should never be done. Your units get stuck in single file lines, and you could have t a pair of glaives taking out any number of, well, glaives at least, possibly bandits as well, but definitely glaives, if that happens. And Icons moving in some reinforcements. Also, do they have anything else? No, they only have glaives. They are only getting glaives. Well, Moodish Code is not building anything yet. They are, in fact, stopping production at the Shieldbot Factory. The factory is closed for business, or at least will be for some time. And it looks like Moodish Code trying to get the bandits around the back. Icons has not prepared for this. I should point out that Moodish Code has prepared for the backside. Icons has not. They have not covered, well, in this case, the north. They, they haven't covered the steep hill. They are aware of what's going on. They are aware that Modish Code is sending some forces back. They know exactly what's going on. And I forgot to turn off map marks. They know exactly what's going on. They do have a tick set up, which is good. The follow up units are in range. So those bandits come in, they are going to die. Or they would have if the tick has now moved out of position, leaving the backside completely open and leaving Modish Code free to wreak havoc. And the tech moving back. I think Icons might have had that group with something else accidentally, because that was a mistake. That was a very big mistake. The bandits, however, are going to be moving in here. Or will they? I'm not sure. Samojur is apparently thinking that Moodish Code is spectator cheating. I'm not sure how that's happening. I don't see anything in the chat that would suggest this. No, it doesn't look like it. Okay, anyway. Moodish Code is getting some... Slight damage taken. But yeah, the bandits, they're going now moving in. The tick is going to take out about five of them. And yes, actually, whoa. Hey, never mind. Nice blast radius. So follow-up glaives coming in. Doing a pretty decent job. Still a lot of wind generators lost. A few metal extractors lost. A lot of metal dropped off. The wind generators are the bigger deal. Icons does not have much energy right now. That's their bottleneck. Metal reclaim will not help that. Though it is just being gone for immediately. Yeah, the... Icons knows what to do. They're building power plants first, getting out of that bottleneck, getting back to a more stable economy before trying to get through to reclaim this stuff. Don't want to reclaim it if they're going to just waste it all. 
Motorshko, on the other hand, going for a Caretaker. They do have enough Reclaim to work from it as well, but they actually had the power to work with it. Especially once the Wind Generators pick up once again. I would recommend building a few more Solar Collectors, or just more Power Plants in general at this point, if Mudish Code wants to reclaim. Especially since with that reclaim, Mudish Code could go for about 20 metal. And going for a Felon, a raw Felon! Okay, a Felon with Aspis behind it, but the Aspis... That... Ooh, 15 seconds with the Glaives coming in, which will take about... Yeah, that'll be about the same time. So this Felon will defend the base, no problem. Icons on the other hand, rebuilding rather nicely, but now at this point is wasting metal. They are reclaiming into a full storage. Need to build more power. Need to build more power, need to push more into the factory. Mostly with power. And up comes that Aspis, more Aspis is behind it. This is pretty much all Mudishkoda's building. Aspis supported Felon. A bit of a concentrated fire there. On this map that kind of makes sense, but it is a very concentrated group. And of course, Aspises have very large shields, meaning that's fairly simple for units to get under the Aspis. Admittedly, had to get past the Felon, but still under the Aspis in order to deal with everything else. Glaives aren't going to do that. Warriors might be able to. Zeus will very likely be able to. However, the Glaives are intercepting. They are seeing what's going on. They only see three dots, though. They're now seeing the shields, and I think I think Icons knows what's up. Not entirely sure, though. The Glaives have stopped, and they are actually going to be able to attack the base directly. Or they would if Modish Goat's commander wasn't there. But even with a commander, then that's a recon com. With two Lotuses, yeah, four Glaives will not beat that at all. Four Glaives won't beat it. A few Warriors might. I mean, this is a small map. Going to Riot Stage quickly, that would be there. But it is going to... It is going to be a pretty powerful attack here. Icons is getting hit very hard. They have no defenses in the main base. The Felon does have Aspis supports. That's a lot of shield power they can draw from in order to actually destroy this entire base, and I think they will. There's nothing really to deal with this. But it is... I'm sorry, I'm getting... Technical issues from some of the people watching. And apparently Hitbox has some issues in login. Good to know. This is all testing, bearing in mind. But this, like I said, this is testing. And it sounds like people are having some issues with trying to get on, make accounts, watch the stream. That is good to know. Because that that is going to discourage adoption. Anyway, it looks like Modish Code has managed to deal a great deal of damage. I can, however, setting up a caretaker in the southwest... And that is going to be, well, that's going to be used for a factory. Being used for getting some extra power up, to get some extra resources. Icons actually has quite a lot of the map, especially this particular metal extractor, which is a super metal extractor, three and a half metal. Icons in a good position to rebuild. And they've also got a proxy caretaker here. This has to be spotted. Mudish Code, Mudish Code does know about this. They know there's something going on in the southwest. They don't know what. There are a lot of care. Yeah, a lot of walls here, solar collectors. Acting as walls, I should say. And Ikins has their commander at level 1, Heavy Machine Gun Commander, which against this isn't going to do particularly well. But still, they do have a Jump Jet Factory coming up. They have the Caretaker assisting it. They do have 20 seconds left till it's done, and after that, it's probably going to be Pyros. As... Oh, Mudish Code, wow, what the heck's happening to them? They aren't able to build anything. 10 and 12, they're... Why is this... Is this on weight? That's... That's strange. Okay, something really weird's going on here in Modish Code's base. I don't know why nothing's building. I've seen this bug before in the later engine versions, but not like this. I don't see any priority going on. There's only this going on here in the northwest. I mean, Modish Code is using... Oh, wait. No, I see what's happening. Yeah, Aspis. Aspis is using all the energy. There's no energy left to build with. I'm surprised that's happening, though. Normally, that's actually something that is avoided as a problem. But I guess not. Yeah, so Aspis is using up about 11 power, or 11 energy per second, to maintain that shield. If that Aspis is turned off, that Aspis needs to be turned... Actually, I don't know if that can be turned off. Wow, that... I, maybe with the weight order, but yeah, it doesn't look good. So the best thing that Icons can do right now is destroy that Aspis. That'll give Modish Code the energy they need to rebuild. I'm very surprised that happens. I honestly thought it didn't, but I guess it does. That is really weird. I mean, very bizarre. I don't understand what's going on.
But like I said, I'm fairly certain. I've never seen this happen before, but I'm fairly certain it's the Aspis using up all the energy available and Mudish Code basically having none to work with. So if these wind generators pick up because they're at 0.6 right now, which they won't because the Pyros will kill them, or the Aspis dies, then Mudish Code will have a chance. But Mudish Code has basically been destroyed by their own Aspis. I am very surprised there is no way to turn off the Aspis shield, or at least no obvious way. Normally things like this have a state, like they have active state. That's normally what exists for cloakers in particular. Aspis does not have that. And sadly, as a result, Mudish Code is going to lose the game. Because they could not build more units to harass this base out before when they had the chance to do so. Rather sad, I'm afraid, but that is how it goes. The Mudish Code unfortunately losing the game because there really was no easy way to get that Aspis out of the way. Yeah. That's got to be really annoying. That's actually a bug. I'm going to report that back, I think, when I'm done this, because that really shouldn't happen. Like, there should be a way to turn that off for the Aspis, and for the Aegis as well, it's static form. The static form might have ability to turn that off, I don't know for sure. But certainly not the mobile form. And that is a mistake, that really shouldn't be the case. That needs to be able to be turned off. Because it is using energy, just like with shields. However, it looks like Mudish Code might still... Um, Mudish Code has no chance. Icons is rebuilding in their main base. Mudish Code has nothing to work with, and Icons can just come back in with the commander. The proxy factory is down, main factory is getting rebuilt, 10 metal per second going into that, so not the biggest deal, but there is a caretaker being built up to help with that, and Icon's now taken over this base. Mudish Code has nothing to work with. Yeah. Actually, I got to be surprised though, why was there no wind? I mean, okay, it's 0.6 minimum, I'm a bit surprised at that, I thought it was like 0.3 minimum? That's bizarre. I thought this map had higher, I thought I set the high wind value higher. Hmm. Well, anyway, Ikens is pointing out the yeah, wind. You got to be careful. It's it's not necessarily a matter of whether or not the map has high elevation or not. It's whether this value here, the wind range first value, in this case 0 0.3, how high that is. That value needs to be high, around 0.7, I'd say minimum. 0.7 to 0.9 is around the minimum you want to build those over solar plants. If it's any lower, then they might drop below solar plants in total value. At any rate, Icon's getting up a stinger over in the base, where Modish Code is focusing on, Modish Code not focusing on the Glogobot factor which is being built, and which is rather, no. Okay, where's the energy going now? Oh, right, it's going to Icon's, what am I thinking? Of course. Icon's, their commander. So if their commander dies, then that will basically destroy everything else. But it looks like the commander's gonna be able to just destroy all of this. Felon has no power, the Aspis is about to run out of health, and the Outlaw is the only thing that really deals any damage right now. So once Icons gets their commander out of the water, then they will be able to just completely do everything they need. And the Stinger gets rid of the Aspis, will get rid of the Felon pretty shortly, and then the Outlaw will follow soon after, and that will be game. That will be game. A hard loss. Mudish Code pretty much might as well surrender, because once that Outlaw dies, the instant dies, the game is over. But yeah, that was all. Aspis does not have the ability to turn off its shield. That's what lost Mudish Code the game. That is a bug which needs reporting. But still, interesting, I mean, Icons did, did make the right move, they went for the proxy factor, that was neat to do. Definitely a good thing to see happen. I mean, Cloakie versus Shieldbot, Sharpshooter is a very useful piece of the arsenal. Pretty much necessary if they're going for Felon Ball. I mean, that wasn't a Felon Ball, that was a Aspis-supported Felon. A different beast, completely, because the Aspis is not an attack unit itself. Thug Felon Ball, that's a Felon Ball. That's really difficult to deal with. That's where you want sharpshooters to take out that felon, so that everything else can just rush in and take out the thugs. Because glaives can deal with thugs in large numbers, but felons deal with glaives, they just cut like them through butter. It's like Dynasty Warriors, except glaives are the mooks, and felons are the player characters. It's kind of like that. Anyway, that is going to be it for me tonight. Thank you all for watching. I apologize for the issues on Hitbox. This is something worth testing, but yeah, apparently there are some issues with login, especially people trying to log in through Facebook, which I can totally see why you do, and frankly, that's a really good idea. It just apparently doesn't work, or it doesn't work properly. I don't know why. I'm sorry about that. I will continue testing it through October. I was planning on testing it through October. I mean, if it's a big problem, I may just not. Like, I may just cut it short, because at this point, I, the delay is kind of worthless if no one's chatting. If no one is in the chat box actually saying anything because they can't make an account 
to view the video with. Why have a de low delay? I might as well have chat with some delay. Then have no chat. Okay, yeah, there's no delay or like two to five second delay. Great! No one can communicate with me. What difference does it make? So yeah, hopefully that gets sorted out. I'm a bit surprised that is a problem. I don't know why it's a problem. You'd think that that'd be a, that's a solved issue as far as I know. I mean, I don't work in networking or in a networking, but in like web design or something like that. That's, that is not my field at all. Tried it once, not a big fan of it. But that, as far as I know, is a solved problem. And apparently Hitbox did not quite use the resolution, which is very unfortunate. I'd really rather it did. So anyway, I will keep that in mind. I hope you enjoyed that for what you guys could watch. And I apologize the chat was not really available due to the fact that the account system is wonky. But of course it's on YouTube, so there's that at least. Anyway, thank you for watching nonetheless, and have a good night everyone.